Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you, sister channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't watched the unboxing video of what we're doing today, make sure you watch that. I'll link that below, and then we will also have the um, after install, and we'll talk about the install. We'll talk about why we had to do this install. We're doing a Duramax water pump. This is for 2006 to 2016. Um, we're doing this on Eric's, the Paperweight Duramax, the LBZ. This is a 2007. And again, it's for 2006 to 2016. I got to remember, you guys need to keep reminding me to keep saying what the truck is for, how, what it covers too for the installs. I got to keep doing that. But, so first steps first, we're going to go ahead and take the fan shroud off. So we took this off from here and just moved it aside here and now we're going to go ahead and take this off right here. You've got two bolts, one here, one here, and then down below here you can see we've got some lovely plastic clips. And there are more. Right there. These are going to be 13 millimeters. 13 millimeters. I'm gonna show you how I got these plastic clips on the left side. That's where I've got my plastic clip remover tool. Remover tool and I've kind of got it, move this line all the way. I've got it right down there. So that's how I got after it. A Little bit of a frustration to figure out how I can get that down in there. Whoa, holy focus, yo. Hey, there I am. All right, a little bit of a frustration to figure out how I could get that plastic removal tool without having to remove the air box, but you, could, you can definitely do it, and that's how you do it. All right, so now you should be able to take out the top part. You did have to unhook that one compressor line, so keep an eye for that. All right, so next we gotta get the fan shroud bolts off. There's one right there. Uh, there's one right there. And then there's another one right down in here, down underneath this shroud, this blade right here, or uh, brace, right underneath this brace. There's another one right below that. And they are also going to be 13 millimeters. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get underneath and drain out the coolant. All right, so typically there's a petcock up in here by your radiator. Eric doesn't ha have it, so he probably has an aftermarket one. So we're gonna drain it by this big lower hose here. And uh, this is our makeshift, shut up, makeshift sh set up right here uh, because our old trusty transmission jack Eric's got that is the way over there is not working right now. And I'm too cheap to fix it. This is how we're gonna drain the coolant. It's a, this is a five gallon bucket. Um, I think there's four gallons of coolant in our trucks. So this should be good. All right, so now it's draining. We're gonna let it drain like that, so it's more of a sustained, controlled drain. Last because time it was all over. oh yeah, it's just, it's just gonna go all over if you drain it like this. So we're gonna let this drain. Drop the truck back down. Start the process. Let me see your weapons of choice. Crowbar-ish looking thing. Two pound sledge. So now that we got the coolant drain, we need to get on the flywheel here, and we're going to. Take this three pound slide. Oh, 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 look at that one. Look at that new one. one. Let's Ooh, give her a shot. This is a new bad boy. New Milwaukee three pound sledge. So we're going to go ahead, put the pry bar, curl bar, whatever you want to use. We're going to go counterclockwise and we're going to go ahead and tap this, all right? Um, and you're going to basically vibrate it loose. Now you're, it's going to take a few times. So it's going to, you're going to be hitting at it for a while. Zoom All right, so once you get it broken loose, you can then just go ahead and now spin it off by hand. We are dealing with a fan shroud right now, which is a pain in the ass. Um, this is not going back on. Subject for a different day. Stay tuned for the next video. 
for that subject. Uh, but anyways, spin it off. Just don't let your fan drop. Our fan shroud will pick it up. And then uh, I did forgot to mention, you want to make sure you keep your serpentine belt on when you're hitting down on your fan. That way it keeps the tension and makes life just that much easier. There we go. All right, so it looked like we had a little audio issue there when I was trying to explain it. Um, you wanna make sure that once you get it broken loose, you're gonna spin it off with a fan shroud there. Fan shroud's going away. Um, different topic for a different day right now. But um, it's gonna stay with the truck. It's just we're not putting it back in for reasons that we can talk about later. Um, you're gonna hit it, hit it, hit it, get it broken loose, and then you can just spin it off like I did. Make sure you don't let it drop. Make sure you catch it. We did have the fan shroud to help us catch the fan, but make sure you don't let that fan drop. Um, also, side note, this is a really good time because we have to take the fan clutch off. It's a really good time to upgrade, to not upgrade, but to replace your fan clutch. Um, we're not doing it but because we didn't really think about it, but it is a good time to just replace that for, you know, long mileage issues or long mileage uh, wear and tear maintenance kind of thing because it's already off and you got it all taken off. It's a good time to do it. But next step, we gotta lift the truck up. You can do it from your driveway. We're gonna go ahead and install the flywheel lock that is gonna be through the bell housing port for the inspection area. So we will show you how to do that right now. All right, so this is the little, hold on, give that to me, excuse me. This is the little thing that you're gonna put in there. Um, there's a warning on there, important warning. Remove before cranking engine. Catastrophic things will happen. There is the inspection plate. Oh crap, right there. You got it. There's the inspection plate right there. So you take a flat blade screwdriver, kind of pry it out. Comes out really easily. Boom. There's your internals. Now, Eric and I can switch. It's kind of hard to see in there, but Eric's gonna go ahead and set that in there. And that's it. Now why is this important? This is important because we now have to take off the harmonic balancer. It's that 36 millimeter 12 point socket that came with this kit. We now have to drop the truck back down, take that harmonica balancer, harmonic, 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 harmonic balancer out, and then we can go ahead, you know, take the fan clutch out, take the water pump and so on and so forth. So let's drop it down. You should note on that. I am gonna note that right now. Note to self, we found out the hard way just now. This Lyle 22100 kit comes with a, hold on Eric, I gotta record that. I know, I'm, I'm really looking. All right, uh, the 36 millimeter 12 point socket is three quarters inch. So luckily, we have a 36 millimeter 12 point socket, a half inch for your CV axles. That, I think it's CV axles, right? What, what were we using it for? It must have been the It's gotta be the CV, CV axle axles. on. Yeah, I don't know, but we had one anyway. So luckily we had one, otherwise we're gonna have to go get like a three quarter inch adapter or just buy a three quarter inch breaker bar, which with our trucks, we don't really use three quarter inch stuff that much. So keep that in mind. This kit comes with a three quarter inch socket. So if you want to get a three quarter inch breaker bar or get a 12 point 36 millimeter half inch socket. There is your harmonic balancer right there. There's the 36 millimeter nut. We're gonna go counterclockwise and we're gonna go ahead, hopefully, maybe Eric can do this. Can you he-man it? Oh, come on, that was bad. Nope. Hold on, we're gonna set this down. I'm gonna help him too. We're gonna, we're gonna get two hands on this thing. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Holy balls. All right, um, two people. <laughs> or if you're a monster. I bet you my brother-in-law, my best friend, could do this by himself, but yeah. Woo! I thought we were gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I thought we were gonna break this far. All right, so now that we got it broken loose, Eric can now take it off. You want the ratchet? Yeah. Oh, she's loose loose. Oh, she's loose she loose? loosey goosey. Eric can now take it off by hand. Not that hand. That hand doesn't work very well. <laughs> There's a different story behind that. 
There she is, let's see that bolt. There's the bolt and there's the washer. All right, so now that, that bolt's out, you just go ahead, go down there with two hands and take that harmonic balancer out. Be very careful with it, just kind of wiggle it on out of there. And there you go, that's your harmonic balancer. Go set it down on your table. Also, by the way, there's a little key here. If you can see that keyhole, you need to make sure when you go to install this back in that you line that key up. It's very important. There's that key. Should be fine. All right, so our next step, we're gonna have to take off the um, hot side pipe. You need to take it off up top here. Take off your fender liner down here and then take, the, take it all out. You have to do that and able to get at, there's two bolts on the back side of the water pump. So you have to do that and able to get at those two bolts. So we're gonna do that next. All right, so this is gonna be an 11 millimeter. I already got loosened it up. So I forgot to do that, but yeah, it's an 11 millimeter. I don't, you and your fender liner, dude. I hate them. I don't know why, it's easy. hate them. It's so simple. All right, now you got the fender liner out. Now you can gain access to this guy right here. 11 millimeter. All right. I should have bought you one of these. All right, so if you are doing this and you have not replaced your um, hot side pipe, I it slipped my mind, I should have bought him a new one. Banks makes a nice one, you can get them from HSP, Whirly, Custom Fab, all those other places. Replace this. It's undersized, it's got really bad angles. The new ones have really nice angles, they're the proper size. Replace this, you're doing it now, you might as well do it if you haven't done it yet. Or you're too late, just like me. All right, so, whoa, zoomed in. All right, so now we gotta take the flywheel clutch out. Again, like I said, this is a good time to, you know, take your flywheel clutch off um, and replace it. So, they're 14 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four. So those are a total of four bolts that are on that flywheel clutch. Flywheel clutch. You're gonna go ahead and take those off, they're a 14 millimeter. So if you see that connector there, I, I pulled that connector out. Um, it just goes in like right there. Yeah, you can see Eric's putting it in there. Make sure you pull that connector out. So you gotta disconnect this hose from the uh, Upper coolant pipe that goes onto the top of the water pump that comes out from the bottom of your thermostats. Um, again, we're gonna you're gonna remove that so that you can turn the hole that solid hose that's on there. You can either turn it or you can pull it out. We're gonna opt to pull it out instead of just turning it. Um, it's just gonna make life easier. Okay. Always oh, getting serious. All right, so we got it out. Everyone that's saying the easiest, the hardest part is that harmonic balancer, 36 millimeter nut. They're lying. That, that thing right there, pain in the ass. I got a feeling that that's the hardest spot. Pain in the ass. All right, so looking at the new one here, there's a bolt up top here, a bolt down over here, and a bolt right here. These two are the ones that are on the back side. So we are going to start with the front three first. There's one up top, uh, there's one on the left side if you're looking right at the, the, the engine. There's one on the bottom right. So I'll show you those on the video right now. They're going to be a millimeter. We can't, we're can't. we gonna try and do our best to get you a video of it, but we're probably not gonna be able to get the camera. All right, by the way, we just decided right now since we're in front, we just went ahead and ripped off that lower uh, boot, that coolant radiator hose, that lower coolant radiator hose that goes into the bottom of the water pump. We decided to just rip that off right away since we were right there. Be prepared for coolant to go pretty much everywhere. It's just gonna happen. And then those bolts, those three bolts are 12 millimeter. Two bolts, one stud. This one that was on this side, the bottom left, that's a stud. 
The top one is a bolt and the one he is currently doing right now is also a bolt. Alright, so if you see right here for the back side, there's one right there and there's one underneath as well. Those are the ones that go right here. Alright, so for the bottom one, we took the bottom skid plate off, we have this pulled off, and then we just came in from underneath here with just a regular 12 millimeter wrench. We were able to get that back bolt off pretty easy, you guys. Honestly, once you get it underneath there, once you get that lower radiator hose off, uh, well, the skid plate on the lower radiator, pull that out, and then you can get access to that, that black side bolt on the water pump. It's actually very easy to access there. We just had a normal 12 millimeter wrench, wrench got it on there, then put the um, ratcheting wrench on there, got that nut off. It's a nut, by the way, so those are two studs that you will have to take off. We'll show you in a little bit. But honestly, be prepared for a lot of coolant, a lot of coolant. Um, and get at that. It took us a while to figure out how we're going to do that because I did notice a lot of people cut that bracket off, which I'm not a fan of. Um, we are leaving the fan shroud off, but I'm not going to cut the bracket off in case somebody wants to put a fan shroud back on. So now we can go ahead, pry the old water pump off, and put it next to the new one and take those studs out. <laughs> and it's a lot. <laughs> oh. Is it going in the bucket at least? Kind of. Sounds like it. A little bit. Yay! Eric smiles. Yay! <laughs> Alright, so we gotta take these two studs out right here and put them into this. That is gonna be an E8 socket, you guys. She's hot. So you've got your E8 socket on this side and your stud that's threaded in on this side. So now we've got all the rubber gasket seals to put on. Your big orange one goes around like right here. It goes around all this right there. So now this goes on here and then you've got two smaller gaskets. You've got this one, this larger one is gonna go on the top of here when you go put that new coolant pipe on, this guy right here. And then the smaller one is the replacement of this guy right here. But before we go any further, we're gonna take that old piece of hose out and replace it with the new one. Dmaxstore.com, Duramax diesel only. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, put the whole the water pump assembly on. The top bolts are going to be a 12 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead, get those in there, hand tight, and then we're gonna ratchet them in there, but really gently. And then once you feel it tight, snug, you're gonna go ahead then and take your torque wrench, that's gonna be 18 foot pounds. So remember that those three front bolts are gonna be 18 foot pounds. Eric's gonna go ahead and get, torque those down, and then he's gonna recheck his torque on that just to verify that he got it right. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add that coolant pipe. It's gonna be extremely hard, it's gonna be really tight, so you're gonna want to make sure you just take your time with it, wiggle it on in there. Took us a while to wiggle it in. Um, unfortunately, I had to stop filming to help Eric to wiggle it back in there. I got it in, and that's gonna be two 12 millimeter bolts. You're gonna get those on there nice and tight to squish that O-ring down. I could not find a torque spec on it. Um, I just got it really nice and tight. It's my mistake, I didn't. Uh, record us putting, what we did basically from underneath here is we slid back the lower coolant hose, we slid that back up onto the bottom of the water pump. Um, we put the <laughs> And then we're gonna go ahead, drop the tr put, put the truck up, put the lower coolant hose onto the bottom of the water pump, and then go ahead and put the back nut on the back of the water pump as well, because it's just easier to get to that bottom stud, and then tighten that one down, and then we'll go ahead and move, drop the truck back down, and uh, get back at that. So now that we're back up here, 
we're gonna go ahead, this beautiful light bar, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we gotta tighten the one down in here first. Now that we got that back nut tightened, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this coolant hose down now from the top. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the harmonic balancer. That is the point we're at. You can see this nipple right here, or this divot. That's what has to go in. You gotta line that up. It's kind of foolproof. Your, basically your lettering goes out. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw this in now. Pretty much reverse order of what you took out is what you can go back in now. A lot of people, some people like to take notes as they go. It wouldn't be a bad idea to do that if you're not 100% confident what you're doing. If you go step by step and write down on a piece of paper, okay, you know, this, 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 and this, then you go reverse order, putting it back together. It's pretty, it gets a lot easier once you've done it once. Um, but again, like I said, a lot of people say this was the hardest part. There's no way. The coolant, that little stupid coolant pipe is probably the hardest part in real life non-skipping shit. Fast. Also, this is a great opportunity to replace your, or upgrade your harmonic balancer to like a fluid fill dampener or something like that. A fluid fill? A fluid, fluid, fluid yeah. film. Fluid film, look at that. They're really getting in the game. Anyways, it's a good opportunity to upgrade that if you want to spend the money because it's already off. Again, same with your fan clutch. Good opportunity to change out your fan clutch to a newer fan clutch. Um, not really an upgrade, but just changing out, you know, like a maintenance thing. Like I said, way earlier in the video, that was probably at this point 18, 20 minutes ago, I would think. Maybe, I don't know how long this is going to be. I've got a ton of footage to cycle through, but it's that simple, that quick. Now we've got the big bolt here. If you see, it's not going to focus for you, but you can see the green there. Look at your butt. I can see your butt, Eric. But anyways, this is they've torqued they torque marked it when they first did it with the washer. Can't really see it on the washer. We will probably we have torque markers, so we will put a torque marker on it. This is again a 36 point 36 12 point socket, and uh, we went out and bought a three quarter inch break, uh, torque wrench because it's 260 foot pounds to torque this down. So your harmonic balancer bolt is 260 foot pounds. Most torque wrenches that are that are half inch will only get up to 250, and that's why we figured out that it's a three-quarter inch socket. So we got a three-quarter inch torque wrench, and we're gonna go ahead and torque that down as well. Again, that Lyle kit comes with the socket you need. Three-quarter inch drive. You can adapt to a half inch if you want to, but it's 260 foot-pounds. It's pretty much everywhere I found online. Um, I do have someone, I appreciate you a lot, man, um, that has the torque specs for everything. It's like 17 pages long. I think it's even more than that. I don't know, it's a ton of torque specs. I could have found it exactly. But everything online says about 260 foot pounds. You want to make sure you do that, all right? I don't, I don't want to skip this. I don't want to, to think like, okay, you can just get it tight. Or just get it to your 250 foot pounds that your, ratchet, your torque wrench can do. No, get it to the proper torque spec. That's it. <laughs> One click. <sighs> Boom! It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. All right, so now we got that torque down. We're now going to go ahead and uh, choose fan clutch. Yes. Fan, yeah, fan clutch next. Um, which that is to 37 foot pounds. The fan clutch idler pulley bolts are 37 foot pounds. So keep that in mind. And that's your last torque spec. Once you get your fan clutch in there, we're then going to go ahead and do the um, serpentine belt first because you want your serpentine belt on the fan clutch so it doesn't spin when you go ahead and put your fan on. So we're gonna do uh, fan clutch, Serpentine belt, and then put the fan on. And then we got left is the hot side pipe, and this is gonna be done pretty quick. Also, don't forget to take out your flywheel lock. You understand? Don't forget to take this out. It's very, very important. So if you skipped a bunch of the video, I've said it a few times in the video, catastrophic if you don't do this. If you don't take this out, take it out. Oh! <laughs> All right, remember these bolts are 37 foot pounds.
All right, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and add the serpentine belt back in. And the reason why you do that is because if you don't add that serpentine belt back in, that uh, clutch is gonna spin on you when you go to spin the fan back on the fan clutch. So you wanna get that serpentine belt back in. This is one of the reasons why you leave it on when you're taking, when you're hitting on that fan clutch. Because otherwise it's gonna spin on you. So it's very important, you can just go ahead and do it. So it's very, it's very important to do that. Um, you're gonna need a half inch breaker bar. Uh, you can do this by yourself. Eric's gonna find out. Well, it's extremely easy now that the fan isn't in there. If you can see me, I don't know if you can see me. Um, doesn't matter. But I will link below how to replace your idler pulley and serpentine belt so you can watch this. Um, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do it now because it doesn't really, it pertains to water pump install, but I don't wanna take all the time to show you how to do it. I can just start the truck. You just hold it. <laughs> <laughs> start calling me nubs. <laughs> Call me nubs. Kim. Then once you get it tight, go ahead and just get your makeshift warrior weapons of choice. Hit it a hit it a couple times to make it nice and snug. You don't have to worry about getting it super snug because it's gonna tighten on its own basically when the truck's running. So, and that's one of the pains and reasons why it's so hard to get it off and why you can't just twist it off is because it basically seizes itself um, on to the fan clutch. Add the upper part of the fan shroud and then we'll add our cool hot side pipe next. What we're going with this? Oh uh, yeah, I can. Or not. I'll tell them. I'll tell them, I'll tell them, I'll tell them. So we're not putting the fan shroud back on. It's a pain in the ass. I don't have it on my truck. I've towed a lot of stuff on my truck. Um, I think the most I've towed is like 18,000 pounds for like three hours. So I get it. I understand. Subject to opinion massively. But the fan shroud will be in the back of the truck because paperweight is technically for sale. Um, Eric's got a lot of projects he's got coming on, including that Trans Am. And so he wants to free up some money. So the paperweight is officially for sale. DM me on Instagram uh, if you want any information on it. A lot of new parts, you know what's done to it, including the Lincoln Diesel. I need car parts. He needs car parts. Lincoln Diesel 64 millimeter, so turbo. Um, so it is for sale. Fan shroud will be in the back of the truck um, for the new owner if they want to put it back on. We didn't cut it up, but we're not putting it back on for a lot of reasons that I can talk about in the future. All right, so we've got the hot side pipe in now. We've got the upper radiator, the upper, freaking fan shroud on. We've got the condenser hose put together. We got this put back together, makes you do that. Eric is now, he tightened the lower um, hot side pipe bolt already, the clamp, and now he's putting on the um, fender liner that I hate to do. But without further ado, now you're gonna go ahead and add some coolant. I'm not gonna show you guys how to add the coolant. I'm sorry, um, it's just gonna add too much time. I will link below the lower radiator hose replacement that we did on this truck. Um, it shows we went through how to add the coolant and how to bleed the air out of the system. So watch that video if you wanna learn how to do that. It's, it's a very simple process. It's just time consuming and time consuming to explain. Watch other people's videos, thank you. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, watch the videos that I have linked below. This will help you do this install. Stay tuned for the video coming up here shortly where we talk about how the install went, um, the hard parts, easy parts, what we could have done differently maybe as well to help you with this install. I wanna start doing that more often. Make sure you watch other people's videos, listen to our podcast as well. So make sure you watch other people's videos, other people's podcasts to learn how to do these things. So you pick up little tips, trick and tips and tricks also remember that late that what but, but what why do I I get to a point where I can't talk anymore um, that water pump the back bolt the bottom side you can get at it from underneath I haven't found anywhere who even mentioned it a lot of people just skip it because they probably lose their mind it gets frustrating to figure out how to get it you you got to remove that lower water what ra lower radiator hose anyways um, from the water pump so remove that drain your coolant out from there uh, anything that you have left over because that is the lowest point and then you can get up at that lower water pump backside nut 
easier and we got it with a wrench. So that's about the trick I have for you right now. We'll talk about more when we get that video that we're gonna talk about. Please, like I said, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I missed some things. I'm sure there are things I missed. I appreciate the support. I'm spitting here, we've had a long day. And we'll see you guys in the next video.